It's Bess here from Life with Bess and welcome to the pattern tutorial for February's Pattern Club Design Boho Living. Our first step is to prepare our hoop ready for stitching. For this design we are using some of my all time favourite fabric from the Devonstone collection and once your hoop is ready it is time to transfer the design. As usual I will be using my iPad as a light box and the app trace table but you can also transfer off a printed copy of the design as well. Using a pilot friction pen on the inner side of the fabric we are going to start transferring our design. Now there are lots of straight lines and some smaller details in this design so just go really slow and take your time to transfer it accurately. Some of those details might end up being a bit close to the edge of the hoop but that's totally okay because we can touch it up. Because this design is very close to the edge I have chosen to swap this design from the back of the hoop to the front but I have to be really careful to make sure those straight lines of the desk remain straight as I retarten the fabric. This is often why I choose to stitch on the back of the hoop rather than turn it around as I want to keep my design stretched accurately or in the center while I stitch. It takes a little bit of fiddling and some practice, but once you are happy with your design you and you've grabbed your lovely neutral color palette, we are ready to stitch. The first little section that we're going to be stitching is this rubber plant that's in its pot resting on this little stool. Starting with some satin stitch we are going to stitch the pot. Now satin stitch can be a little bit tricky to master and it is the hero stitch of this piece so by the end you are going to be a pro. I always start by stitching some guidelines to help show me the direction of my stitches and also help break down the space into smaller sections for me to then go and fill. You can see where I split the square shape of this pot into three and then filled with satin stitch. I find this step really helps me to not be too overwhelmed with the space that I'm stitching and allows me to really focus on creating smooth and even satin stitch. Once you are happy with your stitches, you can use your needle to blend the threads together for a continuous satin effect. Moving on to the stool and the first part that we are going to stitch is the seat of the stool. Again we are using satin stitch but instead this time of stitching vertically so up and down like we did with the pot we're actually going to be using horizontal stitches to create a contrasting texture with the pot. Now initially I stitched the legs of the stool with long and short stitch but it never felt right to me so when I used some short length satin stitch for the rattan chair I knew I needed to go back and fix up that stool. So out the other stitching went. This is really important to remember if you are ever unhappy with the section of stitching or the colours that you chose you can always cut it out or unpick it and stitch it again. So this time I am using satin stitch but along the shorter width of the design. It does take a little bit longer because it's a bit more fiddly but the stitches don't need to be perfect but it creates this wrapped rattan style effect. This is much better the end result. Next we're moving on to the rubber plant itself. Start by stitching the leaves at the top of the plant and work your way down. This way you can slightly overlap your stitches to create that layering effect between the leaves that plants naturally have. We have also been using satin stitch here but slightly angling the stitches into the center to show the shape of the leaves. I personally like to call this petal satin stitch as this is what I mostly use this stitch for flowers. The final touch is to add in the stem. We're going to be using stem stitch for this and a darker green thread for contrast. I also chose to use only three strands of thread here to show a change in texture and depth and really showcase the leaves. The final little detail we are going to add is some accents to each of the leaves using that same dark green thread and some straight stitch. This is to show the center vein of the leaves. For the leaves out to the side make sure you keep that accent on the outside edge of the leaves. Next we are going to stitch the desk lamp. The whole lamp is stitched using the same colour white and it's also stitched predominantly with satin stitch. Starting with the base stitch the dome shape using horizontal satin stitch. Stitching curved surfaces with satin stitch can be a little bit tricky so I like to start at the wider sections, in this case the bottom and work my way to the thinner and smaller sections at the top. Don't forget to blend those threads together. 
Then we're going to move on to stitch the arm of the lamp using two stitches placed over the top of each other, making sure that we are using the same holes in the fabric. This is essentially straight stitch, but just with the two layers of stitching to create a thick enough line for the arm of the lamp. Moving on to the lampshade, start by filling the rectangle shape at the back with regular satin stitch, keeping our stitches parallel to each other. It is only a small shape, so it should only need a handful of stitches to completely fill the space. Then moving on to the front part of the lampshade, start by stitching some guide stitches to show the fanned out effect that we are after. We're going to be using our petal satin stitch here, so make your way across filling in the spaces, sometimes using some slightly shorter stitches to avoid overcrowding the thread in the center. Blend and then the lamp is finished. The next element we are going to be working on is this cute little stack of books on the desk with some trailing porthos on top. Like we did with the rubber plant, start by stitching the pot with satin stitch. Make sure that you leave space in your stitches where the leaves will be hanging over the top of the pot. It is a lot easier in this case to actually leave blank space for the leaves rather than just stitching them over the top of our finished pot. Now onto the two books. We're going to be using satin stitch again, but moving horizontally to show a difference in texture between the pot and the books. Start with the dark green and fill the long rectangle with a few stitches. I always start with my two outside edges and then fill in to the middle. There is one leaf on that left hand side that we will need to watch out and leave space for. Then move on to the second book which is in this tan colour. Do exactly the same horizontal stitches starting from the outside and filling in to the centre. Next we are going to stitch the leaves. Start with a centre stitch from the top of the leaf to the centre and then fill the rest with satin stitch. This will help you to identify the direction of the different leaves and helps distinguish them from each other. For those tiny little leaves on the tip of the vine, you will probably only need to use one stitch. Finally, we are going to add in some stems to the leaves on the two separate sides using a single strand of thread in a slightly darker green. Use a straight stitch to join the leaves together, which are hanging separately from each other on each side of the pot to show the trailing nature of the plant. The single strand is very delicate and almost disappears into the design, but it is just perfect as a finishing touch. Try and bring your needle up and behind the leaves rather than over the top for a continuous feel. Next, we are going to stitch this gorgeous rattan chair. I would die for one of these chairs, but the next best thing is to stitch one. We are going to start by using whipped back stitch with six strands of thread for the fanned section of the chair. Start by using back stitch as an outline, starting with that little arc in the center and then work around the loops. Once the back stitch is completely finished, then it is time to whip it. So bring your thread up to the front of the hoop and make your way along the front whipping or wrapping your thread around each of the back stitches that we previously made. You can see that I kept my back stitches even and quite short so that when it came time to wrap my thread around them it would result in a tight twisted effect. Make sure that you keep your whip stitches in the same direction for each of the sections. Again, when I was whipping my back stitch, start with the arc in the center and then work outside in the loops. The last section that you will whip will be that little arch at the very top of the back of the chair. I love this slightly 3D effect that this stitch has and it is perfect to just lift this stitch up off the hoop a little bit, which will make it a lot easier when the time comes to stitch the desk around it a bit later. Now it is time to stitch the seat of the chair. We're going to be using satin stitch again and have our stitches going horizontally across the seat exactly like we did with the stool earlier. 
Make sure that the horizontal stitches cover the ends of the whipped back stitch that we did for the back of the chair so that it has a really continuous feel. The last step that we have is the legs for the chair and so we're going to be using our short little satin stitches again. Really take note of the different stitch directions that I have used for the vertical legs and also the horizontal support bar across the legs. You can see that the stitches in the arch bar will follow the curve as well. These stitches are really fiddly but are totally worth it for the end effect. We're going to start with the pot of the banana plant. This time we are going to create a basket style pot using woven fill stitch or basket weave stitch. Start by creating some vertical parallel stitches along the pattern outline given. This will result in a loose weave style basket, but if you are confident with this stitch, you can keep those stitches a lot closer together and have a tighter weaved basket. To create the weave effect on the horizontal line, bring your needle up and start to weave, alternating it over and then under those vertical stitches that we just stitched. Once on the other side, bring your needle back down through the fabric, ready to come up on the other side to start all over again. This time we are going to alternate the thread the opposite way. So if we went under and then over last time, this time it will be over and then under. Use your needle to position the weaved thread into position and then repeat and fill the space for the basket. Make sure that you weave the very top and the very bottom of the basket as well. And once you have grasped the concept of this stitch, it creates a really fun texture and is something different to draw your eye to in this design. Next, we are going to stitch the banana leaves. I chose not to use basic leaf stitch for these, but instead used satin stitch. This is because most of the leaves are already arched out on their side, and this way the stitches create that half leaf effect really nicely. Start with a long stitch along the straight base of the leaf, then using satin stitch, fill the leaf out, bringing each of our stitches along that center line. Each of these leaves are slightly unique, they have different curves, etc. So just make your way through stitching up each of these leaves in preparation for the stems to be added last. For the stems, we are going to be using three strands of the same color green and stem stitch. Start at the bottom of the plant and following the outside two stems for the lower leaves first. All of the other stems will fit in between these first two stems. Then just follow the pattern outline up and along each line to a leaf. Some of the stems will overlap each other and as you get towards the top of the plant, the stems will begin to disappear behind leaves and then come back up the other side to connect to the leaves at the very top. The bottom section will get quite crowded with stitches, but that is okay. Now it is time to stitch the desk. We're going to be using three strands of thread to help give some contrast to the six strands that we used for the chair and other elements in the design. Start by using split stitch for the legs of the desk. As always, I am starting by stitching some guidelines to help show me the curve of the leg and then using them to help fill in the spaces. The edges of the leg curve outwards and then they meet in the middle with a straight line. So when we are filling with split stitch, this is going to be our stitch direction. Split stitch is a really nice fill stitch, particularly when trying to create and show different curved textures. Next, it is time to stitch the handles of the desk using horizontal satin stitch. This is such a small little detail, but it really gives an amazing effect in the end. Do your best to try and show the round shape of the handle. Finally, it is time to stitch the drawers. Now, this can be a little bit daunting because there are so many large sections of satin stitch, but do not worry, I have a heap of tips for you. Now, we will be using vertical satin stitch to contrast with the desk drawer handles. And the number one tip that I have for stitching these sections is to hold your thread in the position that you would like the stitch to go in before you stitch it. This helped me make sure that my stitches were vertical and it really helps a lot when it comes to stitching around the chair and making the stitches appear continuous behind the chair. 
break down the drawer into smaller sections and just focus on filling that smaller section with the satin stitch. When you are stitching near the desk lamp and the books, just bring your stitching ever so slightly underneath and behind these elements so that they appear to be resting on top of the desk. Really take your time with this. We are only using three strands, so it will take a little bit longer than if we were doing satin stitch with the six strands. When it comes time to stitching around the chair, try and bring your stitches as close to the whipped back stitch as possible. This is quite easy to do with the whipped thread as it is kind of elevated off the fabric a little bit. The finishing touch is to add an extra accent stitch with just two strands of the lighter brown thread to help divide the drawers that are in the top row. Just a single straight stitch should be all that you need. Again, bringing that stitch as close as you can to the whipped back stitch of the chair. The final part of the design are the two strings of light that hang across the top of the hoop that really finish off this little boho space. Start by couching a single strand of black thread as the base for the lights. I tacked the thread in place where each of the lights are marked out to be on the pattern outline. This creates a really nice effect of the lights being connected to the string. Make your way across both of the strings, couching it securely in place. Once the two strings are finished, it is time to add some sparkle. Using our gold diamond thread, we're going to be using a detached chain stitch for each of the little light bulbs along the string. This stitch creates a perfect little loop for a bulb that catches the light nicely for that sparkling twinkling effect. When you're working with diamond thread, it is really best to only work with about 30 centimeter length of thread at a time to prevent the metallic thread from fraying and knotting too much while you are sewing. I personally prefer to use the diamond thread to the DMC light effects thread, but they will both do the same job here. Once you are done stitching, it is time for all of those finishing touches. So firstly, remove any of the pen markings from your Pilot Friction Pen using an iron, or in my case, a hair straightener. And at this point, you can back your hoop as you prefer. And that is it. That is our Boho Living February Pattern Club design for 2023. The PDF pattern the, with the outline, the color guide, and everything is available on our website, lifewithbess.com. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you have any questions, pop them in the comments below.